state investigators still searching for answers as to what took down this family's plane that was flying from Key West to Mount Vernon Airport in Illinois. Just outside Memphis, Tennessee, air traffic control lost contact with the plane after receiving a distressed call that one of its engines had failed. Minutes later, the Piper PA-34 crashing into a remote wooded area here in Cuttawa, Kentucky. The only survivor on board, a seven-year-old girl who was able to escape on foot walking a quarter of a mile through hilly terrain and dense woods to a nearby home. The seven-year-old has just come out of the woods alone, scratched up at last she was involved in a plane crash. Standing 80 meters tall, these turbines represent cutting-edge technology. Computer controlled, they harness the power of the wind, turning it into electricity. Costing upwards of half a million pounds each, the collapse of Turbine 3 represents a major financial loss for the company operating this site. Some people are speculating that a fault in the control system may have caused the brakes to overheat and eventually melt. One witness reports the rotors spinning out of control. The resulting friction and metal fatigue may have weakened the structure which finally buckled and collapsed. Passengers were ordered off an Air Asia plane Sunday before takeoff because of engine trouble. Most of those passengers refused to get back on that plane after the issue was resolved. Meanwhile, weather hampered Air Asia Flight 8501 search efforts in the Java Sea once again. This comes as relatives continue to wait for more answers in Surabaya. They went to New York to stand in unity with thousands of officers from around the country at the funeral of slain NYPD policeman Win Jean Liu. They were returning home last night on JetBlue Flight 71 from JFK when a 32-year-old woman from Long Island got into a fight with her husband. After the two were separated, the hysterical woman started taking pills and wrote a suicide note. I just grabbed the pill bottle out of her hand and, and the note she was going to put on her lap and it explained what she had done to kill herself. The woman went into a rage, assaulting the officers, the flight crew, and a doctor from the Huntsman Cancer Institute who was trying to help. He was trying to get the pills out of her mouth, and, or her mouth, and she bit down on his hand, and it was very painful, he said. To, he was telling me how painful it was, so we had to actually uh, open her jaws so he could withdraw his hands from her mouth. She was extremely combative. She was kicking and, and spitting and throwing things around. And it was pretty much a, a, a street fight at 30,000 feet. Also, the man from Scottsdale, Arizona, who was killed at this intersection yesterday, was an experienced pilot. In fact, according to his bio, he even had a commercial license. And tonight, he's being remembered at JPL, where he worked for 23 years. I'm Alberto Bihar, and I'm one of the co-investigators on an international expedition. He was in one of the most punishing environments on Earth, but not even the extremes of Antarctica. Stop Dr. Alberto Bihar or his designs. It was here that he helped make a discovery that will go into the science books. Here you see the deployment device that was connected to the mothership. NASA says this Bihar creation allowed human eyes where they never appeared before, a subglacial lake teeming with an odd shrimp-like creature. The 47-year-old was piloting his Lance Air 320 yesterday when it crashed not far from Van Nuys Airport. Bihar, a PhD in electrical engineering, specialized in robotics. He was a research professor at Arizona State University and also worked at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena. Tonight, the manager of JPL Science Division writes, quote, we will deeply miss Alberto. He was well known for his energy, enthusiasm, and technical excellence. His career was dedicated to better understanding Earth and the other planets. An eyewitness to it all, Cheryl Dickerson calling what she saw a nosedive, yet no explosion and no sign of flames. The single-engine Lance Air 320 was registered out of Scottsdale, Arizona. There was a man across the street from me, and he yelled, he goes, do you think he's going to make it? And I said, I don't know. And the, uh, you didn't hear any engine. You didn't hear anything after that. And the plane just went straight down. El 
an update now on our breaking news. A plane apparently in a holding pattern near LAX. Some sort of emergency declared on board. The pilot uh, telling air traffic control that he, quote, just regained control of the aircraft. Emergency personnel are preparing to evacuate passengers the moment the aircraft gets on the ground. We're told there are 152 people on board. Passengers aboard Delta Flight 2116 immediately knew something was wrong. We were kind of shifting side to side. Everybody on the plane was. You could tell it was out of control. The pilot came on um, the mic and he said, you know, prepare for a crash landing or maybe he said emergency landing. Passengers say the crew kept calm and showed them how to brace for impact. They told us to cross our arms like this and then lean forward against the seat ahead of you. The plane was quiet. There were a couple minutes where I wasn't really quite sure what was going to happen and definitely crossed my mind that I uh, wasn't going to make it. Amita, first of all, Air India confirms to headlines today that this bizarre incident indeed took place inside the cockpit of Air India Flight 143. That was from Chennai to New Delhi. And uh, apparently this flight was to take off from Chennai at around 8.30, but it was already delayed because uh, the pilot said that the visibility in the national capital was low and that he was not in a position to take off. But then the passengers were getting very restless because at one in the noon time, they had a flight from Delhi to Paris. And the argument started between the flight engineer and the passengers. And as a consequence to that heated argument with the passengers, the flight engineer went to the pilot. But the pilot really said that he was in no position to move because the visibility in the national capital was very low. And this resulted in a scuffle. And then the pilot apparently hit the flight engineer. And now what we are hearing is that the pilot has locked himself inside the cockpit. News 8's Kelly Hassadal is live with what we've learned now about the crash. Kelly. Well, Stephen Marcello, we are still waiting for the military to release the names of the two Marines who died. Today, we learned they are from Camp Pendleton, and they were supporting a military exercise called ITX. But what caused the crash remains a mystery. We're taking it uh, as best as we can. I mean, the, the loss is definitely significant. Any loss is significant. CBS News 8 has learned the aircraft that crashed Friday was a Huey helicopter similar to this one. It happened about 4.30 during a routine training exercise at a base in 29 Palms. By phone, First Lieutenant Gabriel Adibe of MCAS Miramar says their hearts are aching. Last night was definitely tough. You just think about, you know, the, the loss, the Marines, friends. Uh, the family and how that, that initial shock is going to affect them. Investigators are now working to piece together exactly what caused the Huey to go down. The crash bringing back memories of another training accident back in 2012. Ten people were killed and 13 others injured when a NATO fighter jet crashed at an airbase in central Spain. Spanish Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy said two pilots were among the dead. The other eight were French citizens. Rajoy said there are many injured, 10 of them French and 11 Italians. One eyewitness to the crash said, The accident happened very fast. Just after taking off on the runway, I noticed the plane turned right and hit the ground. It then exploded, he said. The Greek plane was part of the tactical leadership program and was taking part in a training exercise. A defense ministry statement said it lost power and crashed shortly after takeoff from Spain's Los Llanos airbase. The plane hit other aircraft that were parked at the base. morning, Robin. We've heard about a lot of strange things in aircraft, and you can add this one to the list. This morning, an exclusive look inside what became an unusual Delta flight. Shortly before final approach to Las Vegas, the pilot in the cabin tells everyone he's locked out of his own cockpit. The pilot got on the intercom system and said, you know, 
Unfortunately, I have some bad news. I had to go to the bathroom, and when I came back out, I got locked out of the cockpit. The door's jammed. He can't get back in to rejoin the first officer on the flight they started from Minneapolis. So the co-pilot is alone, a solo landing. The tower alerted, so ground crews are ready for what the airport considers an emergency landing. A landing without problems for the 168 passengers. The whole aircraft just started applauding, hollering and hooting. People are saying, thank God. The only snag, the ground steering controls are on the captain's side, so the jet towed to the gate. Well, delays were the theme for many passengers at SRQ today, but for one flight, it wasn't the weather causing issues. It was a small fire in the wheel well of the Delta flight coming in from Atlanta. These pictures provided by airport staff show the airport firefighters extinguishing the smoke. SRQ President Rick Piccolo says what looks to be an easy fix could have been worse if not for the on-site firefighters. And Delta aircraft landed with uh, some hot brakes. When it taxied to the terminal, uh, the brakes still had a little bit of flame on them from uh, landing uh, hot. So uh, firefighters came out and sprayed some water on it, put it out. It'd be uh, like an, an automobile that uh, uh, overused the brakes and brakes get a little hot and a little bit of flame comes off it and obviously in the case of an aircraft you want to be really careful. Flight 2101 to Atlanta on the tarmac, the rear of the plane in a bed of foam from quick working fire crews. It all created some heart pounding moments for passengers when the pilot explained why they had to stop as they taxied toward takeoff. One of the brake rotors overheated, yep. popped a tire, and then I guess some hydraulic fuel got on it and caused a small fire. So-called hot brakes that forced the pilot to declare an emergency, the commotion catching the eye of other travelers. All the doors are open and the aircraft is just on the runway surrounded by fire trucks. Until passengers were taken to waiting buses and finally made their way back to the terminal, Sean Besk admits a little unease sitting on the tarmac. It was a little scary, though, to be honest, because it's full of jet fuel, you know, so, right. so <laughs> that'll get your attention. Dramatic new footage has emerged of the moment a Transasia plane crashed in Taiwan last Wednesday. Surveillance tape on a 21-story building near the Keelung River shows the aircraft plunging sharply minutes after taking off from Taipei Airport, missing buildings by less than a meter. Fifteen people survived the crash, which killed at least 40 others. Divers continue to battle the cold weather to search for three people still missing. Rescuers believe they may be trapped under the mud. Pilots at TransAsia Airways are now being tested on how to handle engine failure after initial data indicated this as a reason for the crash. In another air incident on Sunday, a system malfunction forced the pilots of an AirAsia X plane to abort their flight to Jeddah in Saudi Arabia and return to Malaysia. Tony Fernandez, the CEO of the AirAsia Group, confirmed that the Airbus A330, operated by one of the group's carriers, AirAsia X, encountered an auto thrust system problem about 45 minutes after taking off. A scary ride for passengers on board a United Airlines flight over the weekend. The 767 was en route from Newark to Honolulu when it encountered severe turbulence near Oahu. Several people were injured, including four members of the crew and a teenage girl who had to be hospitalized with a head injury. United says one of its flight safety teams is now investigating.
A United Airlines flight attendant remains hospitalized tonight in critical condition, recovering from injuries she suffered when her aircraft hit unexpected and severe turbulence in flight last night. Happened so quickly, the cockpit crew never had time to warn the passengers or brace themselves, several of whom were injured in the sudden drop. We get our report tonight from NBC's Tom Costello. It was a violent, terrifying end to a routine flight. In just seconds, five people were injured, including a flight attendant with a serious head injury. It's bleeding pretty badly, and they can't get it to stop, so they're requesting a medical attention at the gate. It happened at 34,000 feet over Montana. United Flight 1676 was nearing the end of its flight from Denver to Billings, when without warning, the plane began to shake, then a sudden drop to the right. Amid screaming, flight attendants and passengers were thrown about the cabin. A baby being held by its parents was thrown over several rows of seats, landing safely on another passenger's lap. All of a sudden, they're screaming that they can't find their baby, and she had flown across the aisle. There was wallets everywhere, and eyeglasses, and iPads, and everything had just, it looked like a tornado had come through there. And it just felt like we were going down. And... You know, that was, it was just going to be my last moment. It came out of nowhere. Just a few minutes earlier, this photo of a tranquil sky. Turbulence like this is difficult to forecast. You have to forecast such an extreme wind shear in a small layer so that unless a, a prior aircraft has gone through and experienced it, sometimes it does come as a surprise. An emergency on the runway in Denver. Passengers on a U.S. Airways flight forced to evacuate after smoke filled the cabin. And now the search is on over what caused that smoke and the terrifying moments that followed. Here's ABC's David Curley. They didn't make it to the gate after landing. Passengers and crew, more than 160 of them, using emergency slides to get off this jetliner in Denver. What the f is going on? That's Brooks Robinson, who recorded his slide out of the Airbus jet. We had to evacuate off the airplane. The U.S. Air American Airlines flight from Charlotte had just landed in Denver. Controllers were surprised. We do have uh, people exiting the aircraft down slides. Passengers say the pilot hit the brakes hard when they landed, and then the cabin started filling with smoke. I can't really pinpoint where it came from. It was like a, a light fog at first, and it started to thicken a little bit. With smoke in his cabin, the pilot declared an emergency. They came over the loudspeaker and just screaming, evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. At approximately 2.20 p.m., the Los Angeles Fire Department received a 911 call of a plane that had impacted at Penmar Golf Course. Ford son tweeting tonight at the hospital. Dad is okay, battered, but okay. He is every bit the man you would think he is. He is an incredibly strong man. Not too far from the image, we have come to know of him in the movies. The adventure-seeking, larger-than-life characters who make a habit of death-defying feats of flight, like in Indiana Jones. You know how to fly, don't you? No. Do you? Six days, seven nights. And as Han Solo flying the Millennium Falcon in Star Wars. Sir, the possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3,720 to 1. Never tell me the odds. Today, the 72-year-old actor piloting a vintage World War II airplane with stars on its wings. His trip beginning at Santa Monica Airport. But less than two miles from the airport, something goes terribly wrong with the engine. 53178, engine failure. Immediate return. Ford radios in for help. Air traffic control clearing a runway. Ryan 178, runway 21, clear to land. He tries to turn back to return to the runway, but the plane can't make it. It looked like it, it was short of the runway. Look at him gliding in right here. Look closely. This is the plane. A nearby resident capturing on cell phone the plane in descent. Oh no. Disappearing oh, behind no. the horizon, the plane crashes near the tee of the eighth hole at the Pinmar Golf Course. Elaine Miller saw it all happen. But I'm assuming that there was no engine powder, power since he appeared to be gliding in with no noise. And we watched as he slowly went down onto the tee box of the hole where we were about 100 yards away. She says she ran to the site. We got to the plane. There was one uh, man in there, 
Somebody then said at that point in Harrison Ford, I don't think anybody had any idea or cared before that. The goal was just get him out of the plane and get him safe and hope that he's okay. Fire department and emergency responders were on the scene shortly after. They found a single engine plane aircraft that had had a medium to high impact in the ground with one male victim approximately 70 years old who at the time was conscious and breathing. Paramedics secured him to a gurney and then rushed forward to the hospital. The pilot reported a uh, loss of engine power and was attempting to return to the runway. It appears that he clipped the top of a tree and came to rest on the golf course. That is beautiful. But perhaps the title of his documentary, Just Another Pilot, says more about the way he sees himself, a guy who simply loves to fly. Not a bad way to spend the afternoon. A passion he shared with Barbara Walters in a 2008 interview. You fly. You have planes. You fly your own planes still. What does flying give you? Oh, man. A lot. I love the freedom of flight. I love the places you go. I love the people in aviation, the people that I meet in aviation. I love seeing the world from, from, from an airplane. Um, I'm, I'm in love with flying. <laughs>
The shock of this loss even more profound because of this young Marine, Staff Sergeant Andrew Seif. Sergeant Seif, turn fire. One week ago today, the 26-year-old stood with his wife Dawn, where he was awarded the Silver Star for combat valor. I'd like to accept the award on behalf of uh, the rest of the team. The Marines will mourn all those lost on that helicopter, but they say they will be celebrating all the good things they did as well. That will be a very long celebration. Just extraordinary talent on board that Black Hawk. Martha, do we have any better idea what caused the crash? Well, it will take a while to investigate and know for certain, David, but that fog can come up very quickly and can disorient even the best of pilots, especially flying with night vision goggles. The Eagle Med helicopter was en route to McAllister to pick up a teenager struck by an SUV. The chopper never made it. Shortly before midnight, the medical helicopter went down in a rural area just east of Lake Eufaula. Pilot Matt Matthews was killed in the crash. Nurse Kim Ramsey and paramedic Ryan Setcorn survived but were seriously injured. Uh, it was sitting on its passenger side and it had suffered quite a bit of structural damage. OHP troopers on the scene still don't know what caused the accident. Eagle Med has been in business for more than 30 years and according to the company website, has one of the oldest and most experienced air medical transport services in the Midwest. But this aerial lifeline also has a recent history of accidents. Just absolutely amazing. It is the fourth fatal incident in Oklahoma since July 2010 involving a medical helicopter operated by Eagle Med. The most recent in February 2013. An Eagle Med pilot and nurse died in a crash in northwest Oklahoma City. A paramedic was critically injured. A Serbian military helicopter carrying a sick baby for treatment in Belgrade has crashed near the capital's main airport on Friday evening. That announcement was made by the country's defense ministry on Saturday. Serbian Prime Minister Aleksandar Vucic said at an extraordinary government session that seven people in total, including four crew members, two medical workers and a baby were killed in the crash. Serbia's B-92 broadcaster reported the helicopter had picked up a baby in the southern Serbian region of Araska after an ambulance taking the child to the hospital for treatment for respiratory problems was blocked by a landslide. Somebody should know about flying a plane. I have a landing. 